everyone. I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Having a plan for your money is important, and without prioritizing, it's difficult to create that budget. Well, it's no different when it comes to the city of Kansas City's budget. The city council invites you to provide input on its priorities and the city's five-year business plan. Your ideas will also help shape the next annual budget. At a citizen work session, you will hear a presentation on budget information and data according to resident priorities as shown through the citizen satisfaction surveys. Then you'll be able to give your input during a smaller group breakout session. All of this input gathered will be used to finalize the five-year citywide business plan, which must be adopted by November 1st. Keep in mind that last year's attendees had a pretty eye-opening experience as they struggled to allocate the money they were given, and there was some fun as they prioritized how to spend their city manager bucks. Three identical citizen work sessions are scheduled for this fall. The first is Saturday, September 19th from 9 to 11.30 a.m. at the Robert Mohart Center, which is 3200 Wayne Avenue. The second is Wednesday, September 23rd from 6 to 8.30 in the evening at Northland Neighborhoods, 4402 Northeast Shoto Trafficway. And the final session is Tuesday, October 6th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. at the Hillcrest Community Center, 10401 Hillcrest Road. Reservations are required to reserve a seat at a citizen work session table. Please RSVP to the city's finance department by September 15th. Additional space will be available for those who wish to attend as observers. For additional information, visit kcmo.gov and search for finance. A new 2,900 square foot aircraft rescue and firefighting storage facility was dedicated last week at the Kansas City Downtown Airport. The unmanned facility houses two aircraft rescue firefighting vehicles. Located midfield at the airport, it is strategically placed for any emergency. It is really going to speed up access to the airfield for us. And this gives us a great place to keep our equipment. It's now got direct access to the airfield where before it was in a terminal garage. Had to go through a couple of gates and get off and dismount, put a key lock in. So this is a much better deal. The building contains two side-by-side -side bays and is designed to accommodate larger vehicles anticipated in the future. Being prepared isn't just for Boy Scouts anymore. September is National Preparedness Month. So be sure your family has an emergency plan. Making a family plan is the best way to be prepared for an emergency like a household fire or a natural disaster. To learn more about how to make a plan and put together your own emergency kit, visit preparemetrokc.org. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. September is a great time to be outdoors, and KC Parks offers lots of activities from which to choose. Join local officials for the dedication of a new 1% for Art project at the Firefighters Fountain and Memorial Panel dedication on Friday, September 11th at 3 p.m. in Penn Valley Park. The art project consists of two large walls with a double row of perforated aluminum panels mounted on limestone. Solid aluminum plaques are etched with the names of fallen Kansas City Fire Department firefighters. Dance in the Park, a partnership with City in Motion Dance Theater, takes place in Roanoke Park on Saturday, September 12th at 6.30 p.m. The event begins with a free dance class and then showcases a variety of dance genres which include ballet, jazz, tap, hip-hop, swing, tango, salsa, and more. The event is free and open to the public. View artists at work in plein air along the banks of Brush Creek during the fourth annual Brush Creek Art Walk, September 18th through 20th. Stroll the creekside walkways from the plaza eastward and enjoy artists painting landscapes and cityscapes for a juried competition and exhibit. For a schedule of quick paint contests and the exhibit opening, visit caseyparks.org. Is your family up for an adventure? If so, make plans to camp out Friday night, September 18th in Swope Park. Casey Parks will supply basic camping equipment and organize hikes, food, music, archery, canoeing, fishing, and more. The program, called Wonders of Outdoor Wildlife, is $30 per family and has limited registration. 
Details are at wondersofwildlife.org or call 816-784-5200. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org and click on the calendar or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Signs, signs, everywhere you go there are signs, but just who's responsible for that stop sign in your neighborhood or that traffic signal in front of your community school? Let's head to the Kansas City, Missouri Public Works Department Municipal Services Center to get a look at where the magic happens. Every day, an ordinary piece of metal goes from this to this. The Public Works Department Signs and Markings section makes nearly 200 signs a day. The process starts when an employee creates a sign on the computer, then a special printer prints and cuts out the vinyl overlay. Next, the employee hand cuts another piece of vinyl overlay. Both pieces get pressed on top of the metal panel, and that's how we get many of our city signs. Ray Marcel is the area superintendent for the signs and markings section. We make all the signs used in the city right away of the city. Um, there's regulatory signs, there's warning signs, there are informational signs, um, and emergency sign type signs. We average 15 to 17,000 signs a year that we manufacture. This section also creates the street signs you use to navigate city streets. The signs are created with an added safety feature for nighttime driving. Their retro reflectivity is the, in, the, in the sheeting itself. All night it looks like the lights are on on the sign. Once the sign is created, workers hammer it into the ground or attach it to poles at various locations throughout the city. With so many signs going out each day, approximately 15 to 17,000 a year, city staff stays very busy and they move fast when the situation is critical and citizen safety is at risk. We can replace a sign within two to four hours of being notified of its missing or damaged. Properly signed streets keep citizens safe and alert, so it's important that the Public Works Department knows if signs are missing or damaged. You can help by calling 311 to report a sign issue. Take a look at this one. Some of these signs are really huge, but it's just a part of the effort the Public Works Department uses to keep our citizens safe on the city streets. As you can see, it's a big job. When you see one of these trucks passing through, you're seeing the city's public works employees in action. Painting the streets is also a task of the signs and marking section. Annually, city crews paint and repaint all pavement markings, including double yellow, white skip, edge line, crosswalk, stop bar, and arrows. Can you tell us a little bit about the truck and the machines that we are using to paint all these city streets? Okay. This is a highway striper. It holds 400 gallons of yellow and 400 gallons of white has a, a thousand pound bead capacity and we're able to stripe for an eight hours day well for one load. We are able with this one truck to get 70% of the city painted in a year. With 6,400 lane miles of city streets to mark, this is one critical piece of equipment. Three Public Works employees ride in the truck during operation. There are two in the back and the driver up front. There's also a backup truck that follows the striper at a distance to keep vehicles away from the fresh paint. Traffic signals are also designed, installed, and maintained by the Public Works Department staff at the Municipal Services Center. In fact, the department currently maintains about 600 signals annually. 
The Public Works Department values and needs citizen input about neighborhood traffic issues, and we're here to help make sure your traffic signals, signs, and street markings are in working order. If you have a street sign or traffic signal issue, the best way to get the city on the case is to call 311 and report the problem. Until next time, I'm Katrina Parker with the City of Kansas City, Missouri's Public Works Department. Want to make a movie? Capture, a community-sourced weekend-long filmmaking event. We announce a theme. You shoot the footage and upload your five best shots. Then editors and musicians stay up all night creating four fantastic films. Want to play? It's happening in Chattanooga and Kansas City. Two gig cities, four short films. Only one can be the best. To find out more, go to CaptureFilmProject.org. Together we'll hold fast. Come out to the KCI Cruise Specialty Car Event at 12200 Northwest Ambassador Drive on Saturday, September 26th from 3 p.m. until dark for some hot fun and cool cars. Hundreds of classic cars, muscle cars, hot rods, rat rods, exotics, and more will be on hand. Bring any vehicle you think is worthy of displaying and don't worry about registration or judging. A bounce house will be available for the kids and hot dogs will be sold for just a buck. Bring your lawn chairs and some shade. Since 2007, the Kansas City Aviation Department has held successful KCI cruises with more than 500 display cars, 300 spectator cars, and hundreds of attendees from miles around, with their proceeds benefiting the City of Kansas City Combined Charities Campaign. For more information, visit flykc cruise. There you can check out videos and photos from past KCI cruises. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. When you get to that page, there's a link to our YouTube channel and the Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.